throughout the world, Auschwitz has become a symbol of terror, genocide, and the Holocaust. The Auschwitz concentration camp was a complex of over 40 concentration and extermination camps operated by Nazi Germany in occupied Poland during World War II and the Holocaust. It consisted of Auschwitz I, the main camp in Auschwitz, Auschwitz II, Birkenau, a concentration and extermination camp built with several gas chambers. Auschwitz III, Monowitz, a labor camp created to staff a factory for the chemical conglomerate and dozens of sub-camps. The camps became a major site of the Nazis' final solution to the Jewish question. Berkana was the largest, and during its three years of operation, it had a range of functions. Construction began in October 1941, and it opened as a branch of Auschwitz in March 1942. SS Sturmband Führer Karl Bischof was the chief of construction. His plans called for each barracks to hold 550 prisoners, but he later changed this to 744 per barracks. The prisoners were forced to live in the barracks as they were building them. In addition to working, they faced long roll calls at night. As a result, in the early months, most prisoners in the men's camp died of hypothermia, starvation, or exhaustion within a few weeks. Beginning in 1942, Auschwitz became the setting for the most massive murder campaign in history. When the Nazis put into operation their plan to destroy the entire Jewish population of Europe. The great majority of Jews who were deported to Auschwitz, men, women, and children, were sent immediately upon arrival to death in the gas chambers of Birkenau. Approximately a million people of the victims of the Auschwitz concentration camp died in Birkenau. The majorities were Jews. There are also a large proportion of Poles, so did Roma and Sinti. In addition to Soviet POWs and prisoners of other nationalities, when the SS realized that the end of the war was near, they attempted to remove the evidence of the atrocities committed here. They dismantled the gas chambers, crematoria, and other buildings, burned documents, and evacuated all those prisoners who could walk to the interior of Germany. Thus, who were not evacuated were liberated by the Red Army on January 27, 1945. The museum arose on the former grounds of the camp in 1947 through the initiative of some of its former prisoners. Its aim is to preserve the original remains of the camp commemorate the victims, and carry out research and education. The memorial covers an area of almost 500 acres. The memorial also consists of collections, archives, and the world's largest collection of art devoted to Auschwitz. The entrance is free, and once we found a parking, we walked to the main entrance of the camp, following the old railroad tracks. We were greeted by the main gate in the guardhouse, which is commonly known as the Gate of Death. Immediately after getting off the train, the Jews were ordered to line up in two columns, one of women and children and the other of men. Each column was subjected to selections. In the selection process, the doctors divide the Jews who have recently arrived in the transport into those who are fit for work and become prisoners of the concentration camp and those who are intended for immediate death in the gas chambers. We walk down the rail tracks to the SS guard rooms. This is where they prepare for selection. Sector 1. 
This section of the concentration camp opened in March 1942 as a camp for men, Jews and non-Jews. In July 1943, the men having been removed to a different compound, it was turned into a camp for women from different countries and remained a camp for them until November 1944. From May 1942 to July 1942, a special penal unit for male prisoners was housed in this barrack. Used as an infirmary where prisoners were regularly murdered by penal injections into the heart. This barrack used for sick prisoners. It also contained a registration office which was also used for collecting gold teeth pulled from dead prisoners. Block 160 From December 1942 onwards, several dozen Polish children and their mothers were kept in this barrack as prisoners. They were deported to the camp in connection with the forced resettlement of Poles. Others were brought here from Warsaw after the outbreak of the Warsaw Uprising. This barracks, commonly known as the Death Barrack, was used for the special isolation of those women prisoners who were selected as unfit for work to be sent to be murdered. They had to wait their own deaths without food or water and often for several days. Many died in the barrack before they were summoned. When the barracks was full, additional prisoners who had been selected for death were kept outside in a locked yard. In this particular barracks, SS doctors and nurses murdered newborn babies and their mothers by phenol injections. We walked around and saw more of the sites, such as the field used as dumping grounds for ashes of the people murdered. To the memory of the men, women, and children who fell victim to the Nazi genocide, here lie their ashes. May their souls rest in peace. Ruins of the gas chamber and crematorium too. This is where several hundred thousand Jewish men, women, and children were murdered by gas and their bodies burned. The crematorium was also used for disposal of the bodies of prisoners who had died from other causes. On October 23, 1943, there was a revolt here by the Jewesses brought from the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp, who resisted being herded into the gas chamber. Towards the end of the war, the SS began to remove the evidence of the atrocities committed here. We walk around the ruins and to the next site. International Monument to the Victims of Auschwitz, unveiled and dedicated in April 1967. Each plaque in the ground is in the language of a nationality or ethnic group that was persecuted at Auschwitz. English was added as a 20th. The fields surrounding it are also the dumping grounds for ashes of the people murdered. There is also the ruins of gas chamber and crematorium 3. The main drainage ditch or the king's ditch the pools and round buildings in view are a group of sewage plants built for the constantly rising number of prisoners brought to the camp. The ashes of the people who had been murdered in the camp were dumped in ponds and rivers and strewn on fields as fertilizer. Showers or the central sauna. In this building, newly arrived prisoners designated by the SS for forced labor were registered and disinfected. From now on, they will be only known by a prisoner number, which was tattooed on their forearms. Newly arrived prisoners had to undress in this room. Clothing, valuables, and documents belonging to non-Jewish prisoners were taken for deposit in the camp storage rooms. Property belonging to Jews, whether they were murdered on arrival or assigned to labor camps, was confiscated and taken to a nearby warehouse known as Canada. Once the search was completed, the clothes were disinfected in the sauna and then stored in the Canada before being sent to Germany for reuse, mostly by civilians. After undressing, prisoners were often kept waiting outdoors 
regardless of the weather. It was not uncommon for them to wait 12 hours or more to enter the sauna or to receive their disinfected clothing. In order to make the prisoners conspicuous and to prevent escape, all their hair was cut off. This is the room where the barbers cut and shaved all their hair from the bodies of male and female prisoners. They did it so with blunt instruments and at great speed, the prisoners were often injured. The procedure was particularly humiliating for women, since the barbers were often men and they were shaved in the presence of the jeering SS men. The tattooing of serial numbers assigned to prisoners as part of the registration procedure was sometimes done here. Prisoners showered and were disinfected in this room. They were frequently harassed in various ways. Several hundred people at the time were crowded in here. Water that was usually ice cold or scalding hot poured into them from the shower. Heads in the ceiling. Prisoners usually received neither soap nor towels. After the shower, they went to the next room where they were supposed to dry off. Prisoners were assembled here after their shower. Naked and wet, standing or sitting on the concrete floor and exposed to drafts. They waited as long as several hours for the distribution of the special camp clothing. Eventually, they were driven down the corridor to the room where they were given camp clothes. Dressed in ill-fitting clothing and short of their hair, prisoners were often unrecognizable even to the close relatives or friends. Frightened and terrorized by the procedures associated with induction into the camp and full of anxiety over the fate of members of their families, they were sent off to barracks to begin the hopeless existence of people fated to a slow death in the concentration camp. Canada too, warehouses for storing property plundered from people deported to Auschwitz. From December 1943, this compound consisted of a series of warehouses for storing property plundered from people deported here. Objects brought here were sorted and sent to the interior of Germany. Towards the end of the war, the SS set fire to the buildings in an attempt to destroy the evidence of their crimes. Remains of gas chambers and crematorium form. This is where several hundred thousand Jewish men, women, and children were murdered by gas and their bodies burned. Site of revolt by Jewish prisoners from the Sonderkommando. On October 7, 1944, members of the Sonderkommando, the special detachment of Jewish prisoners who were forced to empty the gas chambers after a mass gassing and undertake the burning of the corpses, organized the only red revolt that ever took place at Auschwitz. They succeeded in destroying gas chambers and crematorium form. More than 450 heroic prisoners who took part in the revolt were murdered by the SS, either during the revolt itself or subsequently for the purpose of retaliation. These three photographs are the only three remaining pictures of Auschwitz actually to have been taken candidly by prisoners. One shows Jewish women being driven naked to the gas chamber. The other two shows the body of people who had been gassed being burned on the open air. Fields used as stamping grounds for ashes. Remains of gas chambers and crematorium 5. On their arrival at Auschwitz, most people were sent by the SS for immediate death. However, they were often forced to wait their turn in this clump of trees if the gas chambers were full at the time. Holding area for sick men prisoners. This is where they held the sick male prisoners. The inmates called it crematorium waiting room because that was where most of them ended up. Unethical medical experiments were also often made on the patients. The area is also where the involuntary abortions and examinations took place. Also, there is a room where corpses are laid out and room for dissecting them. 
Experiment X-ray stations are also here. Jews who underwent involuntary sterilization experiments at the hands of the doctors Horace Schumann. From July 1944, twins, dwarfs, and cripples from arriving transports were kept here. Family Camp for Gypsies This compound was used as a family camp for Sinti and Roma from February 1943 to 44. The majority of 23,000 men, women, and children who came from the Third Reich and other occupied countries died here of brutal treatment, hunger, illnesses, often as a result of epidemics. Transit Camp for Jewesses, mainly from Hungary. This compound is a transit camp from May to November 1944, mainly for Jewish women deported from Hungary and selected by the SS at the arrival ramp as strong and healthy enough to work. These women were not entered in the camp registers and they were later sent to concentration camps in the interior of Germany. Quarantine Camp for Men This compound functioned as a quarantine camp for men from different countries. The purpose of quarantining, apart from identifying those who might have infectious diseases, was to terrorize newly arrived prisoners and to teach absolute submission to camp discipline. Section 3 of the camp. In this section, there was a transit camp, known by prisoners as Mexico. Construction began at the end of 1943 but eased in April 1944, before it was completed. From June to October, several thousand Jewish women were kept in the unfinished camp, many of them outdoors. In 1944, the existing barracks were dismantled and transported to the Gross Rosen concentration camp. Prisoner barracks in this part of the camp were built of wood. In most cases, only their brick-built chimneys remained. We made the loop around the camp. We finally got back to where we started. We went out with more knowledge about the horrible crimes committed here. The word Auschwitz has become an eloquent cultural symbol and synonym for the nadir of the human value system. At the same time, we felt the sadness and the solemnness of this memorial museum. We went by the parking lot where there is a store and a small cafe. And after that, we left the area. So that's it. Until next time, don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe.